It's finally time. This is a monumental occasion for this channel. This desk isn't going to turn into a when are you gonna paint that Tom meme, so it's finally coming in the studio. Thanks, Henny. To move it into the studio, I had to take everything apart and move it in piece by piece. Each piece is kind of heavy and kind of awkward, but uh, it's basically at this point exactly how it was when I finished it in the living room, except everything is now screwed together. Plus, I added this back piece, first to hide all the cables, but also to give it strength. It did rack back and forth a little bit without the back, so trust me, right now this thing is solid as a brick and is not moving anywhere. Unlike the hutch, I added some supports to the back since I had a feeling it would sag with all the gear on it. So with those in, I added all the gear. Every desk needs a power conditioner, some monitors to hear what you're doing, some screens to see what you're doing, a shelf, the most vital part of any recording desk, another power conditioner, and an interface. My whole life, I've only had eight inputs, but as time went on, I found myself needing more and more. So I hopped on a Sweetwater and ordered a Focusrite ISA 428 Mark II, along with the AD card. So once I install the AD card, I can hook this up to the interface and now have a total of 16 inputs. That's right, I'm making moves over here. And for the space above the ISA, I thought a headphone amp would be functional as well as look nice because there's a bunch of knobs on it. Because every desk needs more knobs. And for all the connections, I use Hosa cables. Basically all these are mic cables. I already had 99% of the cables I needed for the desk, except for this ADAT cable. And as far as the cable management goes, I did it as I went. Honestly, I hate doing this, but I used a bunch of these coax staples as well as these J-channel strips. So this is it after everything was in place. It's not the tidiest, but it could be messier, so I can't complain. With all the main gear installed on the hutch, I moved on to the lower portion of the desk. Before I installed anything, I nailed on the trim to hide all the plywood edges and also screwed in the rack rails. The trim though, I nailed on in a way that I can still take the desk apart without prying out any nails, but hopefully I don't have to take this thing apart anytime soon. But on to the gear now. On the left side, I added the switch power strip. Below that, I made a drawer for my plotter and cobbled some drawer slides onto a server shelf because they don't make anything like this. And below that, I put my turntable on another drawer that I made in the same way. And to tidy things up, I added these drawer fronts. And down the road, I do plan on building a deeper drawer on the bottom just to fill the space and have some extra storage. On the right side, I put a blank on top but ended up switching that out later. Below that, I added a shelf which I use as my camera battery charging zone. Under that, I added a drawer. And below that, I have another drawer that I made many, many years ago. And last, moving back up top, I added another drawer. I bought this because I thought the turntable would fit on it, but it didn't. 
I don't know what I was thinking, so I added a back as well as a face to it, and now I have a nice little pencil slash notebook drawer. And last, before I push the desk back, I need to run Ethernet to this computer, which should be pretty easy since the router is right above this room. I have a drop ceiling, and there's this corner which covers a drain line from upstairs, so it should be a straight shot. I also got lucky since there's a coax jack here which led to nowhere, so I just pulled that out. If I did this right, there should be a jumble cable right here. Now I just need to get this to down there. All right, now I have this fish stick. I lost the hook on it last time, so I taped this piece of wire onto it. So now I just gotta feel around and find it. Okay, so I'm actually waiting on a few more cables to come in for the headphone amp that I forgot I needed before I pushed the desk back. So while I wait on those, there's one thing I wanted to bring up about the ISA 428 that I said earlier, and that's that now I have 16 inputs, even though this is a four channel preamp and this is an eight channel interface and four plus eight doesn't equal 16, but there are four more inputs on the ISA but there are four more inputs on the ISA that you can use. However, to use those, you need another four channel preamp, an analog preamp. So ideally I would get another ISA 428 without the AD card. So that way the mic runs into the preamp, the preamp does its thing, goes out of the preamp into the other four inputs on the ISA and then back into here and through the computer, whatever. So just to make that clear, yes, you have the capability of having eight more inputs with the ISA 428, but to use all of them, you'll need a second four channel analog preamp. So just want to make that clear. Okay, so what's going on with this is I have two of the outputs of the interface going into the headphone amp. So that's what these two cables are. And then on the back, there are six channels or six ways to plug in headphones basically, but they're split left and right. So that's why I have these Y adapters. So now I have a stereo signal instead of just a left channel or right channel. So one of these will go to my drum set using this TRS 25 foot cable. This is an interconnect cable. And then channels two, three, four, and five will get sent through the returns onto the snake, which really I don't need all of those, but since you know they're just sitting there, I might as well use them. And then channel six will be left open for, uh, I don't know, something down the road. If I need to send a headphone signal all the way across to the other side of the studio, I can do that with this extra output. Okay, so now with everything hooked up, if I play some music, you can hear it out the monitors. But if I turn that down, I still have signal going to the headphone amp. And then again, channel one goes to the kit over here. And the only reason I have this here is so I can adjust the volume from the kit and not have to go back and forth to the desk. But if we listen, we have signal going to our in-ears. And then there's four more here at the snake. So if you get a headphone extension cable, you now have even more headphones. All right, now for the part that I'm not looking forward to, which is scooting this thing back against the wall, as well as scooting it towards that wall just a little bit. I did add felt pads underneath of the desk before I, I built it. So as I added the gear, I gave it little test nudges to see if it would slide without scratching the floor, which it seemed to do fine, but there is a lot of weight on this desk. So uh, I don't know, let's push it and see what happens. All right, well, that was a lot easier than I thought. No scratch floors, just a few cables in the way. So the desk is now 
Don. the desk hopefully it was worth the wait again sorry about that i was busy producing a series for drumio and just didn't have the time to pull out the old desk and put this one in but here it is you don't know how happy i am to have this thing in here finally i've seen it every day for the past year just sitting in the living room but seeing it in the studio now is such a relief and just for comparison i found this old photo from when i first moved in yeah that's pretty sad looking so this desk is definitely a huge upgrade. If you want to see how I made it, here's a link to that video as well as a playlist to the whole studio remodel. So stay safe out there and I'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>